Junan. Thank you all for joining us again to our PRS uh, resident webinar series. We're very honored to have Dr. Kenta Tanagra to be our invited speaker of the educational lecture today to talk about the principles of breast injury construction. And Dr. Tsai Jiaxuan will be our moderator. I'll give a brief introduction about Dr. Tanagra. He's currently the director of plastic and reconstructive surgery at Mitsui Memorial Hospital in Tokyo. He was graduated from School of Medicine of University of Tsukuba in 2005. And he was once a visitor scholar in our department at Linko Changgun for three months in 2010. Then from 2011 to 2019, he worked on more than 1,000 cases of breast reconstruction, more than 200 cases of lymphedema, and more than 200 cases of musculoskeletal reconstruction in the Cancer Institute Hospital of Japanese Foundation of Cancer Research in Tokyo. And after becoming the department leader of plastic and reconstructive surgery at Mitsui Memorial Hospital, he has continued to focus on treating cases of breast reconstruction. So let us welcome Dr. Tanagra. Director, please. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Zawan. Uh, thank you for inviting me as the lecturer for educational lecture. Today I will talk about my experience of various reconstruction. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself. In 2010, I was a visiting doctor at Rinko Changun. They were my roommates and has been good friends even now. I saw so many operations, more than 100 ARTs, and of course, Professor Fuchun Wei is a tool to finger. I was so moved, your kind and warm atmosphere. Today, I'm so glad to repay for what I had been given. And Dr. Tsai and Professor Cho also has been good friend for me. In 2018, during Dr. Tsai's visit in Japan, we had a good time for several times. And the next year, 2019, was also in Rico. I hear my friend Nob Sato will be a part of the conference held by the Confucian Department. And since I came back to Japan, I have been a co-member of the Cancer Institute Hospital for eight years, where we have more than 300 breast cases and 800 breast reconstruction operations. Some of you may know Dr. Yano, uh, Yoshimatsu, or Karukawa. They were also nice colleagues of me. Now I'm working at Akihabara. Maybe you know her as an otaku, the town. Now, unfortunately, I'm not so interested in such a deep cultures. And my hospital is Mitsu, Hosp Mitsu Memorial Hospital at the opposite side of Akihabara in a very silent area. Uh, in 19, uh, two, 2019, I launched by myself with the support of my senior as part time. Now, last year, already surgeon joined us. Uh, and finally, we performed uh, 50 cases of free public construction in a year. I recognize, I recognize I'm a strange person. And have to get an MBA degree and very interested in social programs. Now I think my department as a social laboratory. Now, last year, I could achieve a child care leave. Besides, Dr. Hayasaki is also a mama doctor of little daughter. Uh, we want to continue to balance gender equality and free flops. So let's move to today's main theme. Uh, these are post-operative pictures of mastectomy. Uh, there has been developed so many drugs and uh, chemotherapy for breast cancer, but mastectomy is even now inevitable. So we do breast reconstruction as a part of breast, treat, breast cancer treatment to make the surgery more acceptable. Now here I show clinical practice guidelines for breast cancer by Japan Breast Cancer Society. Now here it says that since almost all breast reconstruction procedures, including implants and now covered by insurance, information must be provided to all patients who are eligible. The process 
the construction usually starts with TE, we had an atomical and the textured one. But now we have Morka and uh, anatomical one instead. We installed it behind the master and gradually inflated it to prepare next operation. One day, I went to the National Museum of Art and saw a picture drawn by Rune Wall. I thought something is wrong with this lady. What's matter with her breast? How do you think? Yes, the width of her breast is too short. I'm afraid it's too early for a take home message, but this is very important. Among parameters of breast, where this is the most important. Patients often say it is stuck and hard, heavy like iron plate especially in post-operative early days. Tea that protrudes from the trunk interferes with upper extreme tea movement. And when switching to the eye, now easy to widen the envelope, but difficult to narrow it. So, now actual bread, Breast wheels in oblique view shown by red arrow is too large for TE. So we choose a TE that does not exceed the widths of the torso in frontal view. Now think about the height. The upper thoracic region in usually is usually flat to depressed at the yellow line. The T does not expand as the breast anatomical BA shape like the blue and red line. So the upper thoracic expansion with the large height T is, I think it's unnecessary. So we choose standard anatomical T for standard size breast. Uh, standard uh, standard breast and if the projection is larger you want to Im imitate prosthesis and uh, use high projection TE and if the breast is very large full height and the high projection TE is used now we have only one manufacturer authorized in Japan the single purpose for breast reconstruction and also right, so since October 19, uh, October 2019. We have been emphasizing on importance of T insertion. The, if the T insertion is good, easy to select a beer, and, and beer replacement would be very, very simple. So the success of failure or success or failure of the T insertion determines everything. The, our conventional method for T E insertion was muscular pocket. But uh, the advantage is uh, shown there, but this advantage is uh, like you no know, no more invasion and uh, unsatisfactory expand expansion of T E caused by anterior shield of rectus abdominis. So we invented cocoon method. The cocoon method needs cooperation of the breast surgeon and the plastic surgeon. Breast surgeon preserves the fat tissue on caudal edge of the pectoris major muscle and the fascia of the serratus anterior muscle. And plastic surgeon dissect behind the pectoris major and Elevate T envelope without anterior shear of rectus abdominis. Now for the lateral side, the central fascia add for faster flap for lateral part of the envelope. And the dissecting area is D. D shape, the right angle 
for lateral inferior area to facilitate the expansion and not too much for medial superior area to avoid injury of the perforators from the IMA. And uh, round shape is inframammary port of contralateral side in medial inferior area. This is D shape. Uh, we made a flexible bag using uh, patient's own soft tissue. This method is considered better because the ADM has not been approved in Japan and it's unlikely to be approved in the future. So I showed the variation of knee propulsion with body position. We are trying to reconstruct the breast in the standing position. The position of the tissues in the supine and the standing position is different due to gravity. The nipple rises several centimeters compared to the midline, whereas, where there is little change about this point. In the supine position, the nipple position is displaced separate because it is anchored to the pectoris major muscle during the operation. So the, to keep the correct knee proportion, oh, sorry. After the procedure is completed, the mastectomy flap is manually pulled down before the negative pressure drain is activated. Uh, this allows for control of nipple position without affecting the somewhat unstable postoperative tissue. So uh, this is very uh, mild procedure. And we can get the proper position of the nipple, like this. And about this case, the nipple correction was not enough. So I plan to recollect the nipple position on the time of via insertion, breast implant insertion. Now, the sex skin flap and the pectoral this muscle separately, and we call this as the double layer technique and uh, the epitelize this area and overlay the nipple level complex. The, by using these methods, we can control the position of nipple. And now I show the change in nipple position over time. Now, after the insertion, the T position was symmetrical, but the nipple position was slightly higher in right side, or no, left side. However, by the eighth month, it had descended to a symmetrical position. Another case is uh, T descending over time. Uh, Mast pexy was planned and the T was inserted higher. And at six months uh, postoperatively, the position was unchanged. But then at eight months, Postoperatively, the T was lowered and the position became symmetrical. Eight men. So, this is take home message two replacement of the T insertion, uh, BA and uh, autologous tissue also, uh, should be after eight months. Now, these words are not by me, but by the Professor Scott Spear, the giant for the breast implant reconstruction. I think that uh, it takes eight months for the swelling and the edema to completely disappear and for the scar to mature and stabilize the tissue. Now, after TI I talk about the BI, we had various types of BI. Now, micro textures uneven is unevenness with large surface area. Now, smooth have no surfacing. Micro textures have unevenness with a small surface area. And uh, microtextures were recorded 
worldwide in 2019. Now, because it was reported that surfacing with larger surface area have higher incidence of BIA ALCR. BIA ALCR is a breast implant associated anaplasial cell informant. Maybe you have one case in Taiwan. A type of T cell lymphoma develops around the breast implants, and the marker CD30 is positive and ARC is negative. The lifetime incidence is 1 over 2,200 uh, 2, to 1 over 86,000. This means 0.001162. 0.045%. Now, onset occurs in a age of 8 to 10 years, and the initial symptoms were right serum and the tumor. Uh, this lymphoma is a mild type of, with a relatively good prognosis that can be cured by surgical treatment in early stage. In Japan, the number of breast reconstruction have not been recovered to previous level you know, from 2019. Uh, we call this uh, the Aragon shock. So the, to think about this disease, to fear BIA-ALCR correctly is very important step. How likely is one over three to 2,000? Now, we know radiation in this zircoma, mainly uh, angiosarcoma, uh, coma. And uh, this occurs 0.32% and with poor prognosis. And we also know much rare, much more rare disease, uh, the, the Stuart Trevis syndrome, angiosarcoma associated with lymphedema. This occurs 0.07 to 0.45 and with very poor prognosis. And BIA LCR lifetime incidence is less than them. So in Japan, breast cancer lifetime incidence is one ninth, but probability of finding breast cancer in a single screening is only 0.24%. How about BIA LCR? Besides, the rupture of BI instance is one tenth to eight for 10 years. So the image screening for breast implant is not for BI cell and but for rupture like this. Now among screening of BI, we consider correct handling with stroma found by echo is important. The small fluid like this is within physiologic limits. So puncture is not good. And late seroma is like this, and puncture and go to testing. But don't panic. The odds at this point are less than 10%. We have to think about infection, cancer recurrence also. So now we have a smooth implant mainly. I think early postoperative results are comparative to anatomical type, but the long-term follow-up is necessary. So next topic is about flap reconstruction. Uh, there are two workhorse flaps, DP and LD, for breast reconstruction. Now about normal gay product, I, I don't have things to say for Chang'e people. Now, since in Japan, mastectomy for ptotic breast is not allowed by social insurance, so we managed to create somehow ptotic breast. Now, for this patient, first he had inserted. And such case usually needs bilateral deep prop with an osmosis between both pedicles inside the flap. We ensure the osmosis patency by scientific eye, uh, ICZ fluorography. I think it is very important now. Uh, 
And recently you have high definition ICZ device, and this is very cool. There are more cases for additional osmosis than we expected, but no hardness flaps of flaps uh, experienced. Uh, for this patient, this is a remit, uh, a little bit uh, smaller than the right side. So over time, the breast will be more protective because the shape of autologous breast is created by time and gravity. And this is another case. Uh, this is also a challenge, right? And challenges like this needs uh, bilateral props, bilateral pericles deep prop. Now, among such challenges, the subtests encounter such a case. Now, after an osmosis of both pericles, the prop remained red, especially in this area. So. Additional anosmosis of C to D, D E V lateral branch is performed. Then the flap stabilized. So we do not hesitate additional anosmosis. And this is the result. application for HBOC, hereditary breast and ovarian cancer patient is now inevitable. Uh, she suffered right breast cancer or le left breast cancer and had uh, left mastectomy and right RRM, uh, risk reducing mastectomy. And there are difference uh, between the volume of resected tissue. So I applied the uh, different volumes of flaps uh, for both types. And this is the result. Uh, the deeper deep rafts advantage and this about the advantage is shown here. Advantage is, is uh, large, we can get large amount of tissue and uh, skin color match is good for breast from the abdominal wall. And the scar is wrong, but can be hidden. And uh, RRSO, uh, risk reducing serving of rectomy is performed, can be performed at the same time. And this advantage is uh, only once as donor for a lifetime. So bilateral reconstruction should be uh, simultaneous. And uh, we can't, we can't. Uh, uh, we have to recognize uh, about the uh, ventral hernia and the complication. And also the uh, scar is too long because uh, nowadays there are other surg surgical department cut. They wouldn't cut such long skin. So now I use PAP as second candidate. Now PAP prop is a profound artery perforated. Uh, that perforating branch of the femoral deep artery rounds within the greater adductor muscle perforates the uh, medial side posterior. And the prop is used for pressure ulcer treatment, but the application to breast reconstruction was imported in 2012 by Dr. Arlan. And there are two types of design. Now one is a horizontal, means a uh, uh, greater fold, and a uh, vertical one. Uh, this according to long axis. I choose the long axis uh, design. 
Now I should pop overview that there are at least two to three sufficient perforators can be identified and the vascular pedicle of about eight to 10 centimeters can be obtained. Now, and both A and A3 and the vein are large enough to the anastomosis. Now, in most cases, the pop pedicle is larger than the internal thoracic artery on the vein. And the one on site, it's the primary cross like right now covered linear. Now this is summary of my cases. Uh, I had gone the 35 cases and average age was 45. Then the average minor axis of the flap of is eight to nine centimeters. A major axis is uh, about 22 centimeters. Volume obtained is average uh, to 240 gram. And vascular diameter for artery is two millimeter and the vein is uh, nearly three millimeter. Very big enough, large enough. I think the property is easy to use for younger patient. No. Now, uh, from the, my experience, comparison to deep, the bridge deep of pop is, uh, as I said, 45, and the deep is 52. And uh, the distribution is like this. Now, particularly common below the age of 44, the when fertility should be a uh, consideration. So my design for PAP is the first ICG lymphography, lymphography marked lymphatic correcting vessels in the blue line. And so my design for the PAP is the sharp edge for anteriorly. The, this area is thin. So thin, the, this thin area fills the upper thoracic region. And the minor axis is less than 10 centimeters no, you know, to cross primarily. And round it for design for posteriorly. This thick area over the buttock to the fullness of the outer side of the breast. And uh, perforators can be found in the posterior medial line of the side. And uh, I think this is, right, looks like the barrette. So I call this the barrette design. Uh, I'll show you now the video of improper harvesting. Oh. I'm sorry for the sound. <laughs> uh. The uh, skin issue first, the issue is made up to this the gradual muscle. The same muscle is lifted with a hook. The Chang'un hook. And goes into the back. Then this will not hurt the nearby cooperating branches. And Easily, you can find two to three perforating branches. The, once find the process is as usual, but we try to dissect to the back of the perforator as quickly as possible. So now we go to the behind the branches. And uh, this is because it is better to place the wood opener behind the perforator for a better field of vision. It uh, facilitates to elevate the flap in uh, uh, you know, only by myself because we have 
not so much uh, stuff directories. And this is the result. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the uh, case when uh, this patient had uh, SSA and uh, immediate reconstruction by PAP. And uh, I draw uh, two lines. In the design, uh, there were medial posterior line and uh, posterior medial line. The posterior median line is important. This is to be aware of the posterior femoral cutaneous knob and to avoid them damaging it. And the resection volume was about uh, 200, the flop elevated was uh, 272, and uh, 230 gram of flop was used. And uh, this is uh, the result of post operative two years. And this is donor site. And for this patient, the SSM and the insertion was already done, and uh, two stage uh, pop reconstruction was performed. And the flap is also elevated like this. And uh, in the T case, we can uh, well, we can the uh, we can make the skin island as much uh, as small as we can. And uh, this is this is very important for the cosmetic. And this is opposed to the half year. And uh, the third case is uh, immediate reconstruction with PERP for large breast. But we can't get the large amount of tissues with only one PERP. So we plan to get a stacked PERP. Now, I elevated two PERP props from the both sides. And uh, whoa. The, the resection was 600. The flop elevated was about the 600, and the flop used was five, 550. And the result was like this. And the, the skin flop of the pop was resected gradually and uh, partially used to as a nipple reconstruction. But now this is the biggest problem for, of the pop prop. The skin island exposure it has a problem of color match. So I think this is very agree, but the, at that time I couldn't uh, it was inevitable because the uh, birth surgeon said at the operation room, she, uh, she has to you know, get rid of the skin of this area. So the utility of the pop flap is less invasive compared to deep and capable of bilateral reconstruction and the rest complication for donors uh, such as ventral hernia. And uh, we, ha we have more indication of autologous reconstruction for, especially for young patients, including HBOC. So let's think about the uh, reconstruction for young patients. Now she is at that time uh, 37 year old and has left breast cancer. And she underwent the reconstruction after left uh, mastectomy and the T insertion. Now this is a result of BI insertion. And this is post opera two years, the six years, and the eight years. Uh, the, she had a severe 
factual contractual on the BI side. And eight years later, she developed cancer on the contralateral side. And this time she chose bilateral deep reconstruction. The deep reconstruction was not chosen at the younger age, but now in 45 years old, she can choose, she could choose the deep rock. So the choice of reconstruction is changed, varied according to her life stage. Uh, first, uh, though she chose uh, be a reconstruction, but she uh, she had a severe uh, capsule contracture and uh, a contralateral side breast cancer, and she finally decided to uh, have the uh, uh, bilateral reconstruction by the deep rock. Uh, there are so many QR studies using a PRO. The uh, patient reported outcome about uh, breast reconstruction. So I here show the meta analysis of 10 papers uh, the using breast Q uh, kind of PROM uh, as a comparison of art artificial breast and autologous tissue reconstruction. Uh, this paper showed the autologous tissue reconstruction was significantly more satisfactory than artificial means uh, uh, breast implant in a total of five subscales sub now led by satisfaction with breast. Now, the, the limitation of the most of them is the studies uh, uh, retrospective. So in Japan, the Prospective Mouth Center Collaborative Research Study is ongoing. Uh, but this is a sad take me home message. As I showed, the best reconstruction method depends on the patient's lifestyle. And even in the same person, this, uh, that varies, that, that is different to stages of life. We have to choose the best method for at the at the time. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Tanagra. So, is there any question from the audience? Kenta. Kenta. Yes. Yes. I'm very surprised and the and the you also renew refresh my thoughts about the breast reconstruction. So in the first slide, you should you will to correction nipple position during the operation and the reconstruction time. So is this important for your all the patient to correction the nipple position? Yes. So, how, how how do you how how do you manage to keep the knee proportion now? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> because I did not do the any surgery of breast reconstruction, so yes, I did not do breast in the nipple position, and uh, just in the residency. 
I thought my teacher, Professor Zhen and the Longdu, JJ, JJ Huang, yeah. do the breast reconstruction. Yes. But in that time, maybe they will, but they did not to emphasize it's important for the uh, breast reconstruction to correct the uh, needle position. Yes. Uh, so, uh, sorry, director. I have one question. Yes. Uh, you show that. Sorry, I can hear you. After eight months or changing. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear you. So please start with your first word. 居然你的網絡好像不穩。是。對,你在問一下,因為對。OK。OK。Sorry, director. Uh, I have one question. Uh, yes. About the replacement from uh, tissue expander to breast implant. Yes. You mentioned that we should have, uh, wait about after eight months. Yes. So in case of uh, eight months uh, or after eight months, do you keep waiting for adequate uh, position or you will proceed directly to change the breast implant and doing the undermining the skin flap in the infra mammary fold? Mm. No. Uh, I, I couldn't understand your question. No, you mean the difference of the BR reconstruction or or autologous tissue? Jiani, <laughs> 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 Uh, when you uh, when the patient is at the uh, eight months uh, postoperatively of yes. uh, tissue expander, do you uh, keep waiting for a more adequate? I was <laughs> Wi-Fi is not good. Yeah, I think there is a lack of the internet. Oh, it's, uh, it's uh, I think I can my I can I so after you do the uh, breast reconstruction using the tissue expander, after eight months later, and uh, how it, would you just to do the uh, autologous tissue transfer immediately after eight months or, or will wait maybe two or three months and then do the reconstruction? Would you uh, do wait for the autologous reconstruction after eight months or or will wait keep two or three months more and then do the reconstruction? I see. No, no eight months is enough for both and uh, breast implant reconstruction and then autologous reconstruction because uh, the stability of the skin flap can be gained, but the relatively the larger expansion is needed for the autologous reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the, yeah, now uh, to stabilize the uh, expanded skin. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I see. So you mean if you, if, if after the eight months tissue expander insertion, you mean 
if the patient chose the breast implant, you can do the immediate retraction after eight months. And for the autologous uh, reconstruction, because the skin envelope is not enough at the eight months, so you will wait more time and then... No, 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 no. no by the eight months after, no, I prepare for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you, I use the eight months for preparing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after eight months, uh, the scale will mature. Mm -hmm. And this is enough. But a little bit larger for the autologous tissue. Okay. Hello, Kenda. I have one yes. question. Thank you for your very educational and comprehensive lectures. Uh, I saw much. one of your picture you using the vector to evaluate the uh, yes. probably the post-operative the breast shape and the contour and the volumes. For these eight months, how do you expect that is the nipple overcorrection higher than eight months later, the nipple position? And later, the next question is, would you like to use the software to expect the final breast shape and the volume and the contour to preoperatively to explain to your patient? Yeah, that is my two questions. Thank you. Yes. Now, now I use the vector for the, now, sometimes now for the, explanation for the patient. But no, I rarely use it for the simulation of the breast reconstruction no, because uh, no, my one lazy is uh, no, my experience is enough. And, and uh, the second one is the, the the simulation by the vector is uh, um, so so for the breast reconstruction, but very good for the uh, mastopexy simulation to, to have the patient understand. Okay, got it. Thank you. So the most uh, scenario you use the simulation is for the patient uh, needing the mastopexy, right? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. It, it's very good for the patient. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> is there uh, any question from the, the audience? Um, hello. Uh... Professor Kenta, uh, my name is Spencer. I am also from Changgeng Memorial Hospital in Kaohsiung branch. Um, um, I have been a fellow with uh, Dr. JJ seeing her doing breast reconstruction. I would like to ask you a question about um, your donor site um, for autologous tissue transfer. Has any one of your patient complained about the longitudinal scar um, of the PAP flap, um, or um, what is the most um, what is the most patient? Um, what do they like better? Um, do they like the transfer scar of the deep flap better, or do they like the longitudinal scar on, on the for the PAP flap? Which is better for the patient? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think the. The flap selection is not by mainly not by the preference for the scale. No, I, I think the the you no know, breast volume or the age can be the most you no know, most you know, largest factors for the the choose of the flap and. Uh, the, the pop props the scale is longitudinal and uh, can be seen from the posterior side, but 
not can be seen from the anterior side. So yeah. now, now some of my patient the, has been believed the scale can be seen from anywhere recently. But the, she, now she recently noticed that the scale can be seen from the backside. And the, no, she's not so aware of that. And uh, I think the scale at the posterior medial side, side is not so important for the patient. And if they have the, no, I, I, I don't know how to say the very short skirt, but th this is okay. And the, the, the skirt is within the, the coverage of the short skirt. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Now, I visited also the Caution branch you know, during my you know, visiting doctor. Now, it was also a very nice experience for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope to have you here again. Thank you. Yeah, I hope. Okay, so is there any other question from the audience? Great. Uh, oh, okay. If there is not any question from the audience, let's uh, thanks Kenta again. And uh, would you have to take a picture? Okay. Oh, I, guess. I think it's uh, always the photo time. So I would like to take a group photo. Yes. So to memorize the very valuable like, uh, timing. Okay, so please turn on your screen and then we can have a group photo uh, in front of your computer. Thank you. So I probably allow me to count to three and then you can give me a, maybe the sum up or you can give me a, <laughs> a yeah anyway. Okay, or your small heart, anything you want to posture. Okay, one, two, cheese. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tsai. Thank you, Kenta. Okay, you can uh, closing remark, Professor Tsai. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank Kenta again and give us such a place to reconstruction. And the next month, we also have a, a educational lecture in the end of the September. And it's uh, my, my senior uh, in Beijing Tsinghua. Memorial Hospital and Beijing Tsinghua Chang'an Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Chen Yu Huang will give us a systemic factor of the keloid. Thank you very much. Okay. So thanks, Kenda, again. Yeah, bye -bye. thank you for listening. Yes. It's my honor. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope to <laughs> come here. I hope to come here again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, another topic <laughs> <laughs> about the lymphedema or oh, aesthetic that's... surgery. Yeah, maybe it's for the, uh, another topic of breast reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also see the your, your clinical or oh, foam. No, but here the. So, the bird. Now, now I'm also interested in the social the program. So, 